Hi folks, welcome to Coffee and Colossians. Except uh, it's not coffee, I'm afraid. It's uh, Lem Sip and Colossians, and Colossians, we're still at this stage. Now, what we're going to look at today is verse 28. This is Thursday, by the way. And uh, we're considering, I think for those of you who are ministers, or anyone considering being a minister, or even indeed praying for your pastor or whatever, I think today and tomorrow is looking at the method and the motive and the manner of Christian ministry. And I think the method, we'll maybe look at the method and the, and the motive today from verse 28. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. So that's the first thing. The first thing is we are to proclaim Christ. The message is Christ. It's not ourselves. It's not our culture. It's not our country. And to admonish. Now, I, I guess you don't want to be admonished. I mean, if you were, if you, someone to come to you and said, hey, let, let me admonish you. But admonishing literally here is set the mind in proper order, sorting out disjointed thinking. Titus 3.10, warn a divisive person once and then warn him a second time. After that, have nothing to do with him. 1 Thessalonians 5.14, and we urge you, brothers, Warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. So admonishing is to fix disjointed thinking. And again, in our world, which is so confused and there's so much disjointed thinking, I think that this is, um, it's a great part of, of Christian ministry. Teaching everyone with all wisdom. Well, what's teaching? Is teaching in the classroom? Is it in the pulpit? Is it Bible study? Is teaching, sitting with someone when you're having a coffee, doing what I'm doing just now. And this is teaching, isn't it? Writing, by example, on the job, mentoring. There are so many different things. <coughs> Excuse me. And we teach with all wisdom. Well, the wisdom is the wisdom teaching in the Old Testament. We, we, we see that many times. It's not cleverness. It's not kind of Yoda out of Star Wars either. It's just I think it's practical, applied teaching. So Google can give you information and ChatGPT can give you information, but neither of those will ever be able to give wisdom. Now, is there a difference between evangelism and teaching? Well, I don't, in, in one sense, no, because evangelism is teaching the good news and teaching the Bible is evangelism. This is not abstract doctrine. This is presenting Christ, which is intensely practical. Now, why do we do it? That's the second thing, the motive. So that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. It's to make disciples. It's presenting everyone perfect in Christ. This is not just about conversion, but it's about building up and feeding. Your responsibilities as a parent are not over when the baby pops out. Um, we see that in so many different ways. Uh, maturity here is teleos. It, it's used 20 times in the Old Testament. For example, 1 Kings 8, 61. But your hearts must be fully committed to the Lord your God to live by his decrees and obey his commands as at this time. And I think there's this idea of being fully devoted, fully committed to God, an apprentice being thoroughly trained by their teacher. I think many of us in theory accept that we need to know more but in reality, we think it's more like a refresher course that we already know. We don't really expect to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But it's my greatest need and it's your greatest need. Maybe another aspect of this is just it's referring to the judgment day being presented before God. Romans 14.10, you then why do you judge your brother or why do you look down your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. We're all going to stand there. We, all, we need to stand dressed in the clothes of Christ. We need to mature. And you'll note the stress here is on everyone. Our aim is to, to present everyone fully mature in Christ. There's not a spiritual elite. It's all the flock of God. No one should be left out. There should be no church within a church. All the truth is for all the people of God. And, and by the way, 
It's not just the pastor. If you go on to chapter 3 and verse 16, look what it says. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. <coughs> Our praise is also teaching. So I think sometimes we have a very narrow view of teaching and even, even in evangelical churches, we, we, we see it almost like a lecture, almost like a course, almost like a refresher thing, whereas rather it's presenting Christ, it's enabling people to grow in the knowledge of Christ, it's sharing that together, it's wisdom uh, being applied to bring us to a real maturity. So God bless you and uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for, not for Lemsip, but for coffee and Colossians.